Welcome back to the channel guys. It's a sunny day for a change out here in Georgia. Hot as hell, but good motorcycle riding weather. Because of all the rain we've been getting though, my bike's been sitting up. I should probably do a pre-ride checklist. Today's video, teaching you guys what you need to check for. Cue the intro. Yeah, I'm just kidding. There's not really a budget for an intro right now, but because it's so hot, Let's just move this thing along. My name's John Maxwell. I'm a highly trained unprofessional at Chattahoochee Harley-Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. But today, I don't actually have to go to work. I can do everything in my driveway. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video and get my mobile garage door open here, pull out the Sportster, and we'll get on with this pre-ride checklist. Perfect. Now just because I'm doing all of this on a Harley Sportster doesn't mean that it's only good for Harleys or only good for Sportsters. It's good for all your metric bikes, your other model, model Harleys and everything else. You may have heard of T-Clocks before. It's tires, controls, lights, oils and lubricants, your chassis and your stands. Yeah, it's right there. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna link a pre-ride checklist from the MSF website in the description below this video, but it's very long. It's uh, time consuming if you do all of those checks. And if you wash your bike regularly and you do the regularly scheduled services, then you don't need to do all of those every single time you ride. For starters, I'll check this oil. Now it's important to note on this particular model with a oil tank above the crankcase right down there that some oil over time can drain into the crankcase. I'm gonna double check a hot oil check later. I see there's oil in there though. Unless there's like three quarts of oil in my trailer there, then I know there's, th th it didn't all disappear and go somewhere crazy. We'll talk about it more in a minute. Moving on with T-clocks, the first thing to check is tires. Now this is easily the most important part of this checklist. See, improper tire pressure can affect the handling of the motorcycle which is just downright dangerous and if that doesn't get your attention enough then the fact that low tire pressure or overinflated tires both cause the tire to wear very unusually and can damage the tire therefore meaning you have to replace the tire more often if your own safety doesn't matter to you at least hopefully your wallet will now there's a few things about tires that people tend to get backwards there's a maximum tire inflation on the side of the tire. Now that's just that, maximum tire inflation for the tire, not the recommended manufacturer pressure for this particular model or your model or what have you. Another one is that like squeezing the sidewalls or kicking the tire is an adequate way to check tire pressure. That works for bicycle tires or something, but not these. If you've ever held a tire, a motorcycle tire in your hand off bike, you know that it's way too stiff to like squeeze it even when it's not even attached to a wheel, much less to check tire pressure. Get yourself a gauge, do it the right way. Now this list isn't necessarily for every time you ride. Uh, I think that's a little over the top. I think for a daily rider, I would do this set of pre-ride checks every week. If you ride less than once a week, then I would do it every time you ride. Like me, the bike's been sitting for three weeks a month, so I'm gonna do it today because it's been sitting. As far as gauges go, just use one of these cheap pencil gauges. I'm just shy of 30 pounds, which is spec for my model. I can check that on the frame sticker that's right over here. I just use a simple bicycle pump on a skinny tire like this. It doesn't take but a few pumps to go from 26 to 30 PSI. Another good way though is an air compressor even a small pancake style. Kinda wanna get one from, from my setup. I have a giant 26 gallon one that's kinda over the top and it's not in my trailer, so tire pump's quicker. Bicycle pump, whatever pump this. Another aspect to tires though is tire tread. Now there's a minimum tread depth indicator within the tire. It's at a few points around the circumference of the tire. It's good to just check and see where you're at. It's how you would notice that your tire is wearing unevenly like I just mentioned. You do that with the tire tread depth gauge, which I actually don't even have here. Mine's at the shop. I should probably have one at my house though. Hold on. Oh, yeah. 
All right, so just a couple of bucks at O'Reilly's. I'll link some in the description too for Amazon. It's worth having at the house. Works really easy though. Jeez, you just push down, showing the needle off. Make sure you don't do this at the minimum tread depth indicator. And I'm at 4.30 seconds, so I got plenty of tire left. This tire brand new is only like 6.30 seconds in the first place. So controls is probably the easiest check you're gonna do. You don't wanna be riding down the road and have a mirror that's like rotating around all crazy. So just grab a hold of some things, make sure nothing's moving around. Snap, throttle snap back is good. Your clutch feels good with the proper amount of free play and a full pull on it so that your clutch is completely disengaging. Brakes work. I'm gonna check my foot pedal too. While I'm sitting here, this is a great time to go ahead and check and make sure all my lights are working. Just key this guy on, check all my turn signals left and right, check make sure my hazards are working, check my high beam and low beam, brake lights, all that stuff. Now, outside in broad daylight like this, it's really hard to see while you're sitting on the bike what's going on. Bikes with tour packs, things like that, it's very difficult to tell if the lights are all working because you can't like press the button and see like brake lights. How do you even see that? So if you have a garage or like me, a trailer, you can close the garage door, close the trailer, what have you. And while it's dark, it's a lot easier to tell. My hazards are still on, what an idiot. So it's a lot easier to tell if all the lights are working. Now, this is the most basic of checks and it's one that I see overlooked all of the time. It's after every motorcycle accident ever, you always hear the car driver say, well, I didn't see him. There is literally no reason to make it any harder for the cagers to see us on the road. So do yourself a favor and the buddies you're riding with and make sure all your lights are working. That's unacceptable to be in an accident because nobody knew that you were stopping because your brake lights weren't working. It literally just took me five seconds. All right, sorry, I might've seemed a little harsh, but it's true. Somebody needed to say it. Does anybody remember what comes next? All right, guys, I gotta be honest. At this exact moment, I really miss my motorcycle lift. So the next check is my belt or your chain or whatever it might be. What I'm looking for is proper deflection. They actually make a tool for this. Um, I'll, I'll link it below if I can find one for you. I've talked about it before on the channel though. What I'm really after at this exact moment is just to make sure it's not totally crazy out of spec. During your services, you're gonna check actual deflection and measure it and everything. I just wanna make sure it's not way too loose or way too tight because that can cause damage to the belt or chain. Just like tire pressure and tires, this one can get expensive if it gets broken or what have you, if you need to replace it. So it's best to just stay on top of it and make sure you don't cost yourself a bunch of money. While I'm here checking the belt, I'm gonna make sure that my teeth aren't broken or cracked or anything like that. Make sure it, it isn't showing signs of it's gonna like break and leave me stranded on the side of the road. And for the guys with chains, make sure it's lubricated and all that good stuff. If a chain snaps, I hear it can do a lot of damage. I, I wouldn't know because Harleys don't really run final drive change, but you know, yeah. All right, we're pretty much all there. It's just a matter of walking around the bike and checking a few other things, like my master cylinders, are they leaking? Look around the engine, make sure that none of my gaskets are leaking there. Just an overall quick check of the entire motorcycle. Remember that last one was stands? My kickstand about to break? I should check that out right now too. I should add, as far as those lights go, some of them are running lights. You know, like the front, the low beam, and my front two turn signals stay on all the time. So it's good to walk around with the lights on and make sure everything that's supposed to be lit up is lit up. Now with everything checked out, I can do, well, my final check, which is also me about to leave, pretty much. I'm going to fire the bike up and make sure that the battery sounds good. It doesn't struggle to start the bike. Now, me personally, I keep mine on a battery tender, so... I know that it, it should be fine. I shouldn't have to worry about it. But remember that whole oil thing, the cold oil check? Well, when I start mine up, I'm actually gonna pull the dipstick off of the oil tank 
and I'm gonna watch the oil fill back up to what should be the proper level. All right guys, that's the checklist right there. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell notification so you know when I upload. Probably be filming a vlog later today too. If you have some biker buddies that could benefit from this information, make sure to share it along and make sure they get it so they're not riding around flat tires and well, not working brake lights and stuff. That's pretty much it for this week guys. Catch you guys in the next one.